Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video this evening uh, first off to check in, uh, see if you are staying sane. Uh, it's what, been about two weeks now of uh, proper quarantine and some self-isolation, social, social distancing. Um, maybe your loved one is not quite as loving as they were two weeks ago or Maybe you spent so much time alone, you're going crazy. Um, you gotta know you're not alone. Uh, you really aren't. I mean, everyone is going through this and um, we're gonna make it through this thing. We just gotta hang in there one day at a time, y'all. One day at a time. I also wanted to speak to you briefly about a topic, maybe the elephant in the room. And that is, why do we continue to celebrate the Eucharist on Sundays in church when no one is there to consume it? It's a great and fair question. Um, to start off, I want to explain kind of what's happening in the Eucharist super briefly and like a very 360 perspective. Um, first off, the priest stands up at the altar and the, the primary role of a priest is to offer sacrifices. Stand up there and offer sacrifices. So this is what that looks like. Uh, on one hand, um, we're taking what we've been given in creation. We're taking um, bread and wine, things that have come from the earth, and we are offering them back up to God. Additionally, we're offering ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. We're taking everything that we are, everything that we we are composed of, and we offer those back to God and say, this is, this is all we got. And we're also doing that with our voices and with our spirits and in a, in a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we're offering, I'm just kind of bundling it all together, and we're just saying, God, like, here it is. And we're doing that on behalf of the entire church and our congregation. It's not just for us. Um, that is something on behalf of you all and the world. So we do that every Sunday to offer those things back up to God. And God, in his great mercy and in a mystery, um, takes that and he sees our offerings and it is matched with and taken up into the perfect offering of Jesus once and for all we did on the cross. And it is, God sees that and only then when he sees the perfect offering of Christ are our, our offerings accepted and then returned to us as the body and blood of Jesus in the bread and the wine. And then we consume that and we are intimately unified with God in the sacrament, a sign of a real presence of Jesus. And we leave as the physical and spiritual body of Christ. Okay. That's a lot. The reason I tell you that is that it can be incredibly frustrating knowing that the Eucharist is kind of the central act of the church and our piety when you cannot participate in consuming the bread and the wine. So I want to speak to you about something that's called spiritual communion. And I hope this might help in this time of being socially distant. Um, it's been around for a very long time. Uh, church history um, has shown us that people throughout the ages for centuries have not for one reason or another been able to receive the sacrament or they chose to only receive it maybe once a year or twice a year because they wanted that meal to be the most intimate special moment of union with God. And as they say, absence um, maybe makes the heart grow fonder. And in some way, not being able to experience that uh, makes the moment of being able to uh, partake in that shared meal that much more profound. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas calls spiritual communion an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament and in lovingly embracing him as if we had actually received him. Um, it's a way of praying with our hearts and our minds and our bodies when not being able to physically receive and still being unified with Christ. There's also a precedent for that in the Book of Common Prayer. If you turn to page 457 in the Ministration to the Sick, 
Um, you might see in a rubric, um, a rubric is simply um, uh, a way of the Book of Common Prayer teaching us how to read it. It's like a little rule, but it's in italics. And um, this is um, a moment when someone can bring communion to someone who's sick. But let's say that person who's sick has just been put on NPO. They're not able to um, eat or drink anything by mouth. So the rubric says, if a person desires to receive the sacrament, but by reason of extreme sickness or physical disability is unable to eat and drink the bread and wine, the celebrant is to assure that person that all the benefits of communion are received, even though the sacrament is not received with the mouth. Y'all, you don't need me as a priest for you to have a relationship with Jesus. Um, I have the privilege of offering sacrifice and praise on behalf of you all and the world in that we might receive God in the Eucharist. But all you have to do is pray. All you have to do is uh, ask God to be present and every time God will be there. The only thing God really needs from us is for us to feel our need of him. So in... Um, in these times when you can't be in the church to receive the Eucharist, know that you are still unified in the body of Christ spiritually. There's a way that you are connected with Christ always. Nothing can pluck you out of the hand of God. Uh, there's a prayer by this saint that I had not heard of until I looked this up named Saint Alphonsus. And uh, this prayer, I think, is really great. It's a helpful way of asking to be made um, unified with God um, as I'm celebrating the Eucharist. So tomorrow, uh, Sunday, when I am up there standing in on behalf of you all and the church and offering up all of our sacrifices and then um, having God be made present, um, you can pray this prayer. It says, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Friends, know that the church cannot wait for you and us and everyone to be back together physically, to be able to share the meal, to be able to ingest the body of Christ, the blood of Christ broken and shed for you. But until then, we are still one body. We are still offering up ourselves, our souls, and everything we are to God. And in return, God gives us his very self. I hope that this might be encouraging to you and know that as the church continues to celebrate the Eucharist, we have you in mind, that we love you and we want to support you in everything that we can, everything that we do. If there's any other ways that we can be helpful in this time, please let us know. We are praying for you and we'll continue to be thinking about you. God bless.